Edmund Burke, the father of political conservatism, gives an account that is both anti-enlightenment and certainly anti-romantic at the end of the 18th century. A member of parliament, a political figure who was out in the, polit in the public forum and actually had to be elected every few years, Burke nonetheless builds up a set of writings that serve as the foundation of modern political conservatism, certainly in the Anglo sphere. He was, a, ad, he was an advocate of the American Revolution and granting reconciliation to the former American colonies on account of the deep-seated character and tradition of freedom that he saw in the American revolutionaries. And he was a staunch opponent of the French Revolution in 1789. Writing in 1790 in what is called Burke's publication, Reflections on the Revolution in France, Burke offers an account of what is not necessarily his, um, his philosophy. He doesn't have a full systemic view of conservation and conservatism. However, it is an outlook, a disposition, a way of seeing things that is reflected in, uh, that, is, uh, that is described in this classic essay. I've asked you to read some excerpts and let's go over some of the key points. If you wish to know more, and if you are some, someone who identifies as conservative, it really behooves you to read both Burke's uh, his remarks to Parliament on reconciliation with the American colonies and the full essay, Reflections on the Revolution in France. These are some of the founding documents of political conservatism. He writes that society is varied and complex, and therefore he is skeptical, as, by the way, is John Locke in his, uh, his epistemological writings, about the ability to truly understand humans and society. It's too complicated. We can't engineer. He is very much opposed to these experiments that are adopted from philosophy or science in order to, uh, in order to manipulate human society. The great mysterious incorporation of the human race, Burke calls it, and by a kind of stupendous miracle of nature, and he does venerate nature, as the default state, everything seems to balance out if you allow it to be so. He's not necessarily, however, a libertine. He does believe, doesn't believe in a sort of anarchy and an absence of government. He actually believes that government is the deep-seated English tradition. And where is it so? It is in the tradition granted as a kind of inheritance, that rights are not natural. They're not given by God, as Locke says. They're not necessarily, uh, they're not the, they're not a grace, the gift of the monarch. Rather, they are the tradition. This is what, at least in England, he is very, he is a strong proponent of what is appropriate for each specific place and each specific nation and tradition. Rights are inherited from tradition and, as he says, enumerated or entailed in law. Our liberties are, an ent as our, he says, are an entailed inheritance that derive to us from our forefathers. And so in just these first two paragraphs, he first talks about the wondrous things. You can't, ex you can't predict how things are going to turn out. The French Revolution is a complete wonder to him, a mystery kind of, and it has absurd, ridiculous beginnings. And you don't know how it's going to play out. So be cautious, be careful. That is part of the Burke outlook. And likewise, being cautious and being careful entail, it, it will imply a kind of protection, a kind of, as he says, conservative mentality that conserves, that holds on to what you have. If you want to understand how to look forward to, pos to the future, to posterity, look backwards. Look at your traditions. Look back at your ancestors. And the ancestry of England is, a, is an inheritance of conservation, as he says, a principle of conservation to hold on to what you have. And that will be the best way to transmit your values and rights into the future. It doesn't disqualify improvement, but improve very slowly, gradually, constantly by thinking about what you can hold on to. Finally, the last few points, just, just, uh, just to, to give you a brief overview. This also local and traditional view means that there are no universal rights. There is what was being talked about in the French Revolution, a kind of revolution for all of humanity about the dignity of humans makes no sense to him since rights come from who you are and where you live each place is different, and so governments, traditions, and, con and, and constitutions and will be, will, should reflect the tradition of the place 
and are always going to be local. Finally, there's a deep distrust, not just of exuberant emotion, not just of, uh, of scientific principles, but of radical shifts, the kind of beliefs that the Romantics held, who were almost all staunch, uh, staunch supporters of the French Revolution and bringing about a kind of revolution in human spirit. Burke, on the other hand, says that a spirit of innovation is generally the result of a selfish temper and confined views. By not knowing enough, thinking you have all the answers, you're too stupid to understand what you don't know, as Professor Ian Shapiro says in a recommended lecture from Yale, and also a selfish temper, looking at your time now, not thinking about what you owe the past, your filial responsibility, as well as your responsibility to generations to come. Going on, quoting Burke, the idea of inheritance furnishes a sure principle of conservation and a sure principle, a sure me, principle, and a sure means of transmission without at all excluding a principle of improvement. You can remain true to what was, you can still pass on what will be, and do it all while still improving. He's not someone who is a reactionary who says, don't change anything. Change what you must, however, in light of the future and leaves acquisition free but it secures what it acquires. Change will always be in a restrained way. Thank you.